Step 64, the art of listening. This is a big lesson for me. I used to not be able to listen to people. I used to just wait for them to stop so that I could start talking. I used to attack the opinions of others. And when I was not able to attack, I would not contribute in any way to the conversation. I would not be able to ask why does the other party feel that way? Why, or not only feel, but why do they think what they think? Uh, can they further explain? Can they make me understand where they are coming from? How did they get to the to that opinion? And so on and so forth. So, how to actually listen to people? without conflict or without creating conflict, without being aggressive in conversation. Now I, <clears throat> excuse me, now I've experienced in the past some family members, especially discussing politics in Slovakia and being very rude when it comes to when it come when it when it came to defending their point of view so the exchange was was not pleasant to listen to because it was one ego against the other and it was so obvious and it was so it would change the whole energy in the room and as a child, I would feel that. And so I would usually just, you know, I would just walk away and go to my room and do my thing. And so I never really learned the skill of being able to, to um, use arguments. And I'm working on that. I'm, I'm practicing. But... Today is not about arguments and about how to be a uh, great conversationalist uh, who is able to defend what they believe or think. Today is about listening. And so even if you're like me and you are not quite sure if you are able to contribute to the conversation, you can always listen attentively and this is how it's done and I've read a couple of books about this and I've practiced and I have a couple of friends who are brilliant at this from whom I learn very often. But the true art of listening was explained to me actually by Antonio. Antonio what was this great man in his, I'd say, 50s, 60s, that I met in Rome. He was a teacher, or we could say a headmaster of a private art school, music school, theater school. It was all combined. And he sat me down and he explained to me what it actually means to listen to somebody. And he he said that it's, you know, you have, I will just use tools that I have here. This is something which you put inside of a bottle to shake, shake whatever you want to shake, shake up. Anyway, so let's say this is the somebody who's talking and this is you. And so he said to me, it's not that you just stare at the person and you, you listen to the person. It's... No, uh, sorry, this is, this is the way he put it. Um, 
what this person is speaking, what this person is trying to say, depends on how you listen. Meaning, the better you listen, the better the speech of this person becomes. Now, this applies to real life conversation, right? So whenever you find yourself in a situation where you have to listen to your boss, let's say, if you and your attitude is like, what again? What is it going to be again? Then your boss will deliver his message accordingly. But if you listen attentively, that will influence how, uh, that will influence the attentiveness of his or her speech. Now, you might not believe me, but this truly, truly works. Now, I challenge you to try it out next time your spouse, your husband, your wife, your friend, whomever you meet. You, can, you basically can set an intention. This person will say something which will be so eye-opening for me today. This person will say something which will, like, it will shift something inside of myself. It will make something clear. Now, you see, the reason why this works, how it works, is because we truly are all connected. And if you don't believe this, then eventually you will get to that conclusion. But we are all very much alike. And you really will, the more people you talk to, the more you travel and maybe you talk to different people living in completely different countries, we are all connected. And so if you set an intention of this person is going to say something which is going to be eye-opening for me, then that person will really say something like that. And it can be delivered in a very plain language. It can be delivered in a very direct language. That all depends on the way that the speaker is able to present his or her ideas. So sometimes you have to help this person to deliver the message that he or she is trying to deliver. And that is by asking the right questions. And those depend on the topic, obviously, but whenever you find yourself in a, in a spot where you're like, you don't really get what's happening, what is this person talking about, feel free to stop them. If that is a conversation one on one in any way, but feel free to stop them and be like, this point, could you elaborate on that more? Why do you think that? Why is that important? Because sometimes people who are trying to deliver a message to you, in your job, in a partnership, wherever, sometimes they think they're explaining it well, but that doesn't mean that you get it. So it's up to, it's your responsibility as a listener to make sure that you actually understand what is this person trying to explain to you. And so don't be just sitting passively. And now we all know people who don't like to be, uh, what is the word? Who, who, who don't like to be distracted with questions. Um, who lose their thoughts when when you just you know ask them a question so you can write it down if 
if, if that's appropriate if you know it, it really all depends on the level of conversation that's happening whether it's professional or private or whatever but yeah you can take notes and you can write down the question and actually then get back to the point you want to get back to in that way you won't disturb the, the, the speaker now I'm not an expert here, I'm still learning this. But I think what we can all take from this is if we respect every single person we meet and uh, we are able to not be judgmental about what or how they are speaking then we truly can get a huge wisdom nugget from everyone and that's because god is not able to descend and be like oh veronica was trying to reach you let me tell you this is the mistake you've been doing your whole life <laughs> you know like in church um that's not gonna happen so what's what God is doing, basically, he's just throwing people in your way, different people, strangers, friends, new friends, old friends, you know, colleagues. And, and the more attentive you are to people who you interact with, the more messages you can decode. Now, if you feel like there are only stupid people around me, like I like, um, like that will never get you to more advanced people. I'd say, like, if your attitude is like I'm surrounded by dummies, and um, then you will really not get anything from those dummies so-called dummies by you anyway. Uh, people who we sometimes consider a little less intelligent actually carry a huge, huge wisdom with them because sometimes we are, I think sometimes our, hmm, how to say this, simple people sometimes benefit from the fact that they are not so educated, they haven't read so many books and stuff, because they have the, they have the, what we call in Slovak, zdravý sedliacký rozum, which means how to translate this in, into English? Mm, I forgot the phrase in English. But it's basically, they have the, oh my lord, I want to go for a direct translation, which would be healthy village brain. That's definitely not the phrase that people use in English, but I think you get the point. It's um, to have common sense. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See, the download sometimes takes its sweet time. Common sense. So don't underestimate people around you. If you work as a manager in a factory, talk to people. They will tell you in a very plain language what's not working well in the company. They will say it straight to your face. They will say it as it is. And it will knock you off because with other managers, you will be brainstorming like, how should we do this, that, do, 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 do. But then instead of that, if you just walk and talk to the, to the people who are actually doing the thing, the actual manufacturing or whatever the case is, they will tell you exactly what the problem is. 
Now then it's up to you to figure out a way to avoid that problem in the future as a manager, obviously, but I hope you, you get the point. And so communication is, you know, communication is on many fronts mentioned so many times, right? Like communication, seminar, um, but to actually be able to talk to people, to talk to different people, to talk to a um, different, I don't want to say different level, different levels of people, but they are, they're, they're truly are um, more, we could say more developed souls and less developed souls. And I, and that's probably not a correct impression, um, correct um, expression, sorry. I, I'd say younger and older souls, maybe. Um, and I'm now talking in uh, younger soul is not only uh, a little child. I mean, young soul could be somebody who just is experiencing life for the very first time, meaning, and this is surprising, but these are usually very successful people, young souls, as we call them. It's If you imagine you live different lives, and now this is only if you believe in, in past lives, right? So if you don't believe in this, then ignore what I'm going to say. But if you do, you will meet people who you can say you can you you see straight away these people are have been here before like they this is not their first round let's put it that way and then you meet people who are very they're usually very easygoing they they really are quite innocent in many different ways i don't want to say kind of stupid because it would be too uh, rough of an too too offensive expression, but they are simple. They are just simple. Doesn't mean they are not successful. With that simplicity usually can take them to high positions because simplicity always wins. Simplicity and complexity, you know, it, Simplicity always wins. If you want to read about it more, I suggest you to start reading Jung. Now, Jung, his books are so difficult to read. But I'm trying these days, and in one of his books, he's talking actually about marriage and about how in a marriage, usually two people meet, and one of them is more simple than the other. Usually one of the match is more maybe articulate, more advanced intellectually, logically. And the other pe person is maybe more of an intuitive soul, you know? And so what sometimes happens is this intellectual person might come um, to the point of not being respectful to, the, to, to this uh, intuitive kind of simple uh, soul just because uh, he or she is able to smash the the ideas of this simpler person just because this person is more is a better speaker or is more can connect so many points all at once and can like destroy the opinion of this person but are we going to fight when we talk or do we want to understand where is this person coming from now this person may say something something which drives this person mad. It's like, how can you say that? That's like so incorrect. It makes no sense. It contradicts your what you've said before completely. But are we having a competition here? Like or are we trying to actually understand one another and understand 
where is this person coming from? Why do they think what they think? Why suddenly they, they said something which completely contradicts what they had said before? Are we trying to understand another human being and where he or she is coming from? Or are we trying to, to always win an argument, to always be kind of above or something? And I really hope you, you understand what I'm trying to say here. If you don't, and if you want to see this dynamic in a relationship, I strongly suggest you to watch a series, TV series called Queen Victoria. And what I've just described is what was happening between Queen Victoria and her husband, Albert. Because Albert was this very logical, highly intellectual, highly educated human being. And Victoria was sometimes making decisions intuitively, which were many times the best decisions. And what he was, what they were fighting about for many years was that he, like her decisions made no sense to him. And uh, he would start to insult her. And the only way she was able to defend herself was to use anger. That was her coping mechanism. And so she would, she would smash things. She would shout at him. She would attack, right? Because he attacked first intellectually, but he did. And uh, so she fought back. The only way she could fight back, which was to, to just express that frustration that she felt inside. And so if you are into psychology of uh, a relationship, I strongly suggest you to watch this show to see how, how well you can actually observe this dynamic uh, in this specific case. Now, what you can also do if you want to go further is to read diaries of Victoria, Queen Victoria. Now, because she wrote so many words. Now, they, they say a specific number uh, of words, like millions. It was millions, but I don't remember a specific number. But she was just journaling her whole life. And I'm not too sure if they, are, if they were able to save all the journals. But um, that was the way she, she, she was uh, basically being her own therapist at, at that time. Anyway, um, I digressed, but I think there were some good points we've made. Anyway, if you want to go further in this and you want to actually hear from a pronounced uh, psychologist, of this age, then I suggest you to start listening to Jordan Peterson. Because Jordan has a, um, he married his uh, sweetheart when he was very young. And once again, the same scenario. He, super intellectual, very smart with words, with arguments, with, uh, you know, in discussion and stuff. And her, a very intuitive soul, that, um, you know, that um, had a completely different communication style, probably. And he's very open about this. And he explains many times that, once again, um, you can, like, yes, you can smash the arguments of the other person if you are more intellectually advanced. But w what is the result of that, anyway? Like, okay, so you win. You win, yes, you... you Yes, you collect more points, intellectually speaking, but does it help the, the, the relationship? Or is it creating something better or is it destroying what had been create, created so far? Um, you know, Elena Cardone used to say, you are either building 
an empire or you are destroying one. So and the empire is the relationship. Are you, are you creating an empire if you keep attacking the other party just because they, their brain fun, they're a different kind of a human being? Is that creating or is that destroying some, somebody literally? Because what happens is this party will, will feel more and more suppressed, right? And, and then they either use like Queen Victoria, her temper to just, or they just get suppressed completely. And then they either give up and they stop, they, they give up and they, people either break up or they become so submissive that this person will no longer be interested in them because if, if, if we are not able to have a conversation, how are we going to survive? And Jordan Peterson, he says, especially when you have children already, each couple has to have at least 90 minutes, 90 minutes of a meaningful conversation exchange about what is bugging them so they can fight about it but fight about it in a way that we are trying to find conclusion that works for both of us right so every couple has to learn how they can possibly fight together in a effective way so that you create space for both parties to express themselves you can like that can heat up of course the conversation can heat up but eventually you want to make up right make up make out both <laughs> you know like so um that is the only way to survive in a relationship and i and uh, you know and it is a a skill I, i'm convinced it is a skill uh, to be able to talk together in such a way and to give one another the respect that every everybody deserves everybody deserves um well that's a bold claim um but your partner if you chose them they in most of the cases deserve respect unless they did something i don't know what but i don't want to go that way the the point was remember how i started this video i don't really feel like talking and here we are 27 minutes later i am on purpose standing so i don't overdo it <laughs> but at least with these videos i am able to overdo it um what i was doing in the past which was a huge mistake i would I, I, I know it now as a fact when I look back, I would over, is, is that a word, overburden somebody with uh, my thoughts, ideas, my, you know, what was happening in my mind. And that can be, that can get too much for some people. Like, um, especially if you just, focus on one person and you want to shower them with everything you think and feel and everything that is going on through your mind. Of course, um, of course, the more you can do it, the, the, the better the relationship, I, I, I feel like, but in any relationship we can overdo it. And that is why it's important to be able to observe the person you are talking to even when you, when it's your turn and you are here and and so be able to spot whether this person is actually able to absorb what you are trying to say or whether this person is just like what and so you know it's a dynamic that has to be exchanged right Yeah, so I, I went down the road of how to actually talk um, in a relationship, how to, even though I wanted to talk about how to truly listen, I hope you get what I was trying to um, express here. It, 
in any way, I, I remind myself daily to recognize people in the room. And that is what Ty Lopez is teaching us in this lesson. Recognize who you could possibly talk to in the room and who is who has something to who has something to teach you and believe me when I say everybody you come across has something to teach you. And um, what is also important, and this is like another point, is to not listen to some people who are being bold with some of their claims. And, um, you know, I will use a very simple example, which is politics. And you hear people talk about politics so often, and yet they've never worked in that space. They are not an expert, but yet they will have very bold opinions, very bold judgments, very bold recommendations. And they were not, you know, they act as if they knew how it, what it actually means to be a prime minister, for example. And uh, yet they never even, they have never even done something for the local community. You know, so when I find myself in such a room, I don't listen. I don't engage in those conversations because I know those are just, they just want to express um, some turmoil they feel around the situation. But they, if they are not willing to uh, think constructively and um, actually use helicopter view, then I don't engage uh, in those conversations. And I, I will just like put my earphones and do my thing. This usually happens in the office, right? Some conversations I truly isolate myself from because I don't need that energy. So it is a true art to be able to recognize whom to listen to, whom to talk to, uh, who needs space to express themselves, who, on the other hand, maybe you can shush a little and be like, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but I can't listen to this. You can always just refuse to listen to something. That, that's also an option, right? So I am, I'm uh, using so many different points all at the same time, but I'm sure that you are able to listen to me attentively and get the true message I'm trying to get across because I'm also on a journey. I'm trying to level up these skills, but I also don't want to just quit in the middle of it just because I feel like the videos are not being effective or I'm not being completely clear or that I jump from one topic to another. I don't want to stop because when we stop, that's when we get depressed because regret comes. It's like when I was exercising today, the yoga instructor, instructor, I, by the way, um, very much like Travis Elliott and his app, Inner Dimension TV, which he created with his wife, which is beautiful. So it's a, a there are different programs for ladies who are pregnant, for for people who want to use yoga as a hardcore exercise, for people who want to um, who want to do yoga after a flight, people who want to you know there are so many programs. So it's called Inner Dimension TV, and the annual subscription is hundred and twenty dollars, which I think is a steal for a whole year of any kind of a yoga program you can think of. A little sales pitch, which 
I have no promo code. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm doing it because I want you to get the, the inner peace I get from these classes. Anyway, um, see how you can, how you can jump from one topic to another. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to come back to the original point because that will take me another minute. Oh, see, here it is. So I was saying that, yeah, I, I don't want to, oh, yoga today, Travis Elliott in the body. He said today, your true home is actually, we could say your mobile, mobile home is your body. Now the concept of home is a big one. Like you, you want to have an environment which resonates with you and where you feel like you can create in that space, you can rest in that space, you can work in that space, all, you know, but your truest home, really, at the end of the day, for some time, for the time that you have left, or for the time that you have on this earth, is your body. So, it is... It is so... good to never stop attending to our body you know like when you stop taking care of your body how does it feel to start again it's like yes i did this 30 day challenge workout i let's say and then you stop you're like oh let me now just um uh, let me just use the benefits of uh, the hard work and let me just uh, not work out for a couple of weeks but then you get back on track, you, you try to get back on track and you're like, oh, it, it's more difficult. It's like, I wish I, I, I wish I never stopped, right? And I've been through the cycles of being, uh, being heavier, being thinner my whole life, which I think is very natural for a woman in general, for everybody in general, right? General, general, general. Um, but yeah. If you just move your body in any way every single day and it's up to you whether, whether that is tennis um, whether that is horse riding or going for a walk going for a run doing yoga uh, doing table tennis whatever you like to do then you'll be just fine of course it's not to not good to be so hung up on one routine it's it, i think it's always good to change it up but uh, just move your, just move your body in any way you possibly can today, and I'm sure you will feel better. And never stop. That was the message, right? <laughs> never stop. You never know who listens to your videos. And today I received a very nice message from from an old friend, and it encouraged me because I had no idea. I had no idea he would listen to my videos. I had no ideas. I had no idea. And so let this video inspire you. Let this video inspire you. I'm going to eat now. Bye. And um, you choose to listen to somebody today. Arrange a meeting with somebody, an old friend, and just listen to them. What's new with you? Oh, you are married? How did you meet your partner? How did, like, ask questions. Give them space to express themselves. You wouldn't believe some people just need you to create space for them. And they will pour, they will pour their, their struggles and everything. And then you can just, you don't have to necessarily give them advice. Unless they ask specifically, like, okay, what would you do in this situation? But sometimes just let them, let them talk it out. Because when we talk out, like these videos, this is the proof of when I turn on the camera, I start talking about the topic. I do have the points here, but usually the, the topics go around and they combine. And it's like a uh, whole kind of... Oh, I'll be bold and I'll say it's a flow of a sort, you know, it's kind of a flow. But yeah, let's, because when people say it out loud, it's 
sometimes they just need to hear themselves say it out loud and they will be like, oh, actually, you know what? Now when I'm saying it, this is the solution. This is what I have to do. And you don't have to do anything. It's just you give them the space to open up and to share what's, what's going on. And in the past, this is the truest mistake I was doing. I could very early on spot where that person was making a mistake. I was being like that. I was being, um, I, I thought I knew better, but what do I know? Um, that, that's the opposite of being humble. And so I would be waiting for them to finish so that I could give them my proposition. I, I, could, I could tell them my solution. Usually I had very good solution, by the way, but it's not up to me to give them my solutions. They have to come with their own. Because if I give them solutions, usually it doesn't even resonate with people. They're like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. And they will start using arguments against your solutions. And that's not effective. That's not a, a good conversation. So let them come up with their solutions. You can, you can give them a little hint. You can ask them a question. Would you ever consider, uh, you know, doing this? And they will say, no, <laughs> then leave it. Don't persuade them. Not worth it. I tried and people need to learn. People need to learn their lessons. And that's how we all learn. Imagine somebody would walk and tell you, oh, this is what you are doing wrong. This is what you are doing wrong. This is, these are the five solutions you should choose from. <laughs> so, yeah. Sometimes I would be too aggressive in conversations and I would propose solutions to people straight away and they don't like it. Then they, they never called me again. <laughs> because it was like, I don't need this person who is trying to manage my life and, and who thinks she's better than me. <laughs> And that's not what I was trying to do. I was just trying to help. That is the, the worst you can ever... Never try to help. Never try to help. If you have the urge of helping somebody, ask them, would you like me to help you in any way? And if they say, oh no, you know, it's fine. I'll just... All right. Don't try to help because it usually will, when you try to help, uh, then usually it, it like works somehow against you. It's like you try to help them and they receive that help and then they're like, oh, it was actually your idea. I actually did this and now look what happened. And they're like, well, but I was just trying to help. I was not proposing it will 100% work for you. I was just trying. Don't try. Oh, I could talk forever about this. Don't try to help people. Wait for them to be, listen, just listen, listen and wait for them. And if they ask, what would you do in my situation? That is a green light for you to start talking about what would you do in that situation? But until they reached, if they never reach that point, you just shut up and you just listen and you just brainstorm how maybe would you, what would you do in that situation? But don't, no, I've learned so many times. Okay, but see, I cannot shut up. It's 44 minutes. God damn it. I, I just want to eat now. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for listening to me. And now I am going to shut up. Bye, 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 bye. I haven't had Coca-Cola for hundred years. I love the shirt though. My sh but wh why are you not ever? Yeah, it's like sugar overdose, but sometimes that's exactly what you need. So stand in, st stand up for your decisions, even though they are not the healthiest ones. I was talking about body, how to take care of it, but sometimes break the rules, shock your body a little. I haven't even seen that the original traditional 
bottle of um, Coca-Cola like in glass for a very long time because I don't pay attention to it anymore. I don't like the cans. Anyway, bye. Bye. Listen to somebody. Um, you can do it. If I can do it, if I can learn how to do it, which I'm still on, on that journey, you'll be just fine. You'll be just fine, believe me.